I'm so excited to be here with you in our new studio. We have so many exciting things coming up and it's so great to see everyone in the comments already. Jeanette, you got the early board award today. So thanks for coming in early. We have an amazing special guest, Debbie Cleek. She's going to be showing us digitizing in Stitch Artist. It's going to be so cool. But before that, I just wanted to let everyone know that we have a giveaway today. So please comment, hashtag AllBrands, and you'll be eligible to win a $50 AllBrands.com e-gift card at the end of this live broadcast. So good luck there. We also have tons of amazing specials right now on all brands of products. Uh, if you visit our website, www.allbrands.com, and click the Promotions tab, all of our uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Small Business Saturday uh, promotions are listed there, along with some coupons that you can use on products on our website. Uh, if you see anything that you like in this video, there's also a link in the description to shop those products. I hope you enjoy this. And without further ado, I'll bring in. Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Hey. Hi, everybody. Hi. It's oh me God. again. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> we got so much love for your videos before. Uh -huh. oh, Jan said, I liked your show last week. You got a lot of praise on that one. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. It really does. <laughs> Anne says that she'd love to know more. Oh, oh after today, you are going to know so much more because we're going to actually be digitizing, not just looking at the digitizing tools. We're going to create a design in level one and level two and level three. We're actually going to show you the benefits of each one of those three levels. So oh. it should be fun and exciting and educational. Very cool edutainment <laughs> i love it hey if you guys if this video is helpful helpful for you or if you want more tutorial videos we are so close to 9,000 subscribers i think that we're only three away so if we get to our three subscribers during this live i will do two giveaways at the end of this broadcast so <laughs> go ahead and click oh, i'm sure we can do button. that <laughs> awesome. All right, Debbie. Well, I know I have your screen here that I can put up and we'd love okay. to learn more about this amazing program. All righty. I'm excited to show you. <laughs> All right. And here it is. Okay. Can everybody see the screen? Okay. Yes. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is work in level one, which is this level right here. These are the tools you have in level one. And, and don't look at that as, oh my God, that's such a tiny toolbar, because a lot of really big, awesome, cool things come in small packages, as you all well know. So uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about the drawing tools and specifically the draw with points tool which is the one you'll use the most in drawing with a drawing in level one and then the magic wand tool when you start off with good clean artwork like this and when i mean artwork i mean images bitmaps jpegs tiffs gifs those kinds of things it doesn't work with vector art in level one We'll work with vector art when we get to level two and level three and show you how super easy that is. That'll be one of the benefits there. But just because we can't work with vector art doesn't mean that it can't be fun and easy. I'm going to start off by getting my draw with points tool. I'll click on that. And I'm just going to trace around this green heart here. And I'm going to try to do so, so I have as few points as possible. The reason for doing that, wherever there's a node or a point, depending on what you choose to call them, there's sometimes no rhyme or reason. But wherever there's a point, the software has to make a needle drop. It means the software has to penetrate the fabric at that point. 
So you want to make as few points as possible. Oh, and don't worry about that. I'm going to show you the easy way to fix that. And then I'm going to come up here and let's just click on the close shape tool. There we go. There's the beginning that we're started. We're cooking on one burner so far because we've got our outline. The, first, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to click on this point down here. Let's fix it first. And we'll fix it by clicking on this. And you see these little whiskers that stick out here with the balls at the end? Those are your beziers. This tool right here turns your bezier handles on and off. I wish we didn't have that because, in my opinion, you should learn to manage your beziers and not turn them off. Learning to manage your beziers makes your digitizing so much more simpler and you get so much better results when you have them turned on because I don't have to pile in a bunch of nodes to get the shape that I want. So I'm going to start down here. I'm going to right click on this node. I'm going to change my Bezier handle to a cusp. What that means is each one of these guys can be edited independently. And I can edit this one here while I'm here as well. See how that worked? Now I've got a nice point at the end of my heart. Now let's see if we can do the same thing up here. We'll click on this node. We'll right click. Select cusp. I can edit the left side and I can edit the right side. See how much easier that makes your editing? Oh my gosh, that's so easy. And just being able to work with your nodes. And that's another reason why you want to have fewer points. Because if your beziers start getting in the way of each other, that's when things become kind of dicey and, and hard to determine which is a node, which is a bezier handle. And you can see the nodes are the little blue dots. The bezier handles are the black or the purple, depending on whether or not it's on, on color. But if we turn off our artwork, that heart is spot on if you ask me. Okay, we could do the same thing with the flag, but let's use, since we've got such pristine artwork or image, we got such a pristine image, I'm going to click on my magic wand. I'm going to click on the flagpole and the flag. Right click when I'm done. And now I've, I've created all my artwork that I need to do my design. So now I can come over here to the right in my objects tree, select my yard start. When you digitize, you always start from the back and work your way front. So I'm gonna start with the green heart. I'm gonna fill it with a fill stitch. I'm gonna come over here to my flagpole. I'm gonna fill it with a satin column. We're looking at the draw the stitch bar now. And then we'll come over here and select the final item, the flag. Let's make the flag an applique. And let's give it, let's see if we come over here to the properties, we can give it a zigzag stitch. It's done. Oh my gosh, that was so quick. And you just traced over a design and made, made it a, a digitized embroidery file. That's so easy, Debbie. Well, thank you. <laughs> Brenda agrees. You make it look so easy. Well, and it really is that easy. I'm not making it look that easy, but thank you. <laughs> it really is that easy. Nothing that I did was hard. The hardest thing I did was trace around the heart. And even that I didn't do perfectly. I used the bezier handles to shape it and get it the way I wanted it to. And there we have it. So now... This 
we can change if we want to change the green fill area maybe we want to change the pattern we can maybe you want to change the green pattern to an applique we can do that as well maybe you want to change it to stippling cute now let's see how this looks without the image turned on that's our finished design remember this is an applique so let's see how it looks with let's show our fabric okay and you have your applique position and your applique top stitch you if you want to do a three-step applique just click on material go back to your color list and you'll have a three-step applique which means you'll have a placement a tack down and then your top stitch oh my goodness hey debbie so the screen's kind of small where is that color list the color okay. list is here in the properties Got it. on the right hand side of the screen great okay any questions about level one uh let's see uh, we don't have any questions yet so you that's must be explaining things very well that's because uh, level one is so fun and easy that is very easy so i know there's three different options so if you go to the all brands product page you can select to chart us one two or three what's the difference between those oh well, when we get to level three the, uh, when we get to level two you'll see the level two toolbar will be a little bit longer and have a few more options. It'll be able to read SVG files and digitizing there will be just as fun as in level one and just as easy. You just have more toys to play with. I like that. And the same with level three. Let me show you what's going to let's get a new page. And let me show you one more thing here in level one before we move on to level two. I think we'll have plenty of time. And I don't want to cheat you out of fun features in level one. Hey, Debbie, we did just get a question that came oh, okay. from Jan Mayu. She says, well, putting the putting green had two shades of green. Will it stitch out without the delineation? Okay, let's go back to the fill stitch. With this guy right here, it's all one chain of green. What we need to do is we need to move our start and stop points. Oh, look at that. And then we've pretty much got it. We can move this guy here. There we go. <laughs> See, and those are all things that, yeah, you'll need to concern yourself with. But as a new digitizer, there's nothing more exciting than getting your first digitized design to your machine and stitch it out and then see what little tweaks and things you need to make. Um, what I hope to show you here in level one is that it's not that hard. It really is easy. So... You guys should all be taking your first designs, if you haven't already, to your machine and stitching them out and patting yourself on the back for doing that. It's so easy. I do have one question that came in from YouTube. Okay. Um, actually, two, two uh, questions from YouTube, uh, past videos uh, that I wanted to ask you. So okay. Dee from YouTube asks, I'm seeing that Essentials, which is the program that we talked about last week, is a program that would be quite useful to me. If I want to do basic digitizing, such as applique, would I want to add Stitch Artist? Yes, and Stitch Artist level one would be the perfect level to add. That way you're not that, that far invested and you've got all the tools you need to create applique and fun design, such as a simple golf design here. Perfect. Here's another one uh, from Dot Embro from YouTube. 
Uh, watching from New York, uh, and this was a, a an essentials question uh, from last week. How do you remove stitches materials? Material, what would you recommend? Doc? Well, to, re to remove stitches, I'd use enthusiasts. That's the easiest way. With enthusiasts, I can, come over, can, I can come up here and select the stitch edit tool. Collect, select the lasso, select a group of stitches, and delete them. It's just that easy. Perfect. Okay, let's bring in one more design, one more image. I'm going to click on my image button. I'm going to bring in this bowl and rolling pin design. And this again is the perfect design, perfect image to use the rolling pin on. I mean, I'm sorry, to use the magic wand on. But I wanted to talk for a minute about the look for holes. I wouldn't want to with this particular design but if you had a design where it had polka dots and you wanted to, you know, maybe bigger ones and you wanted to look for those, click on look for, look for holes before you wand it. And then it's going to see all those holes. See at the top here, all those little red dots, those are all the holes that it drew around. So when I fill it, it won't fill the holes with stitches. Does that make sense? Yes, very cool. Okay. Okay, well, let's go to level two. Unless there's any questions about level one, I'm not going to go through digitizing all this one because we've got level two with cool stuff and level three with cool stuff as well. And your socks are going to be blown off by the stuff in level two and three if they're not already with how easy level one was. <laughs> Debbie, I think that this would be so cool because I wanted to say we whisk you a Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, that would be so cute. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, look at this one. How exciting. Okay. Okay. I'm going to click on my magic button here. It's going to take me to the level two toolbar. Now you'll see right now I have an image and a vector button. So that vector button is new. You'll see I have a couple of satin handling. I have, you can draw a, a column making a left and right. Okay. And you can draw a column by making two completely different sides. But what we want to focus on is how easy it is to digitize these two elephants and some other fun tools without having to think about, do I need to use that hard tool? I can't get those corners right. I can't get that stitch narrow enough. It just, you know, without having to make it hard. I like it easy. So I'm going to, again, work from the back. I'll select my, and, and because big thing, big thing here that I need to tell you, we're starting off with artwork. Remember in level one, when we had our, let's hide our stitches. When we had our artwork, We had, when we had our image, I'm sorry, when we had our image, we had to create our artwork, which meant we had to draw our artwork. Now in level two, we start off with artwork. I already have all my little nodes around there. So right away I can fill that sucker. Let's show our stitches. We can fill that puppy or that baby elephant with stitches. Let's see if we can find a nice gray color.
Okay, and let's move our start and stop point so we don't have that annoying line in the middle. And just so you know, we still have a little bit. I could play with this a little. And that's what you'll do. You just play with it till you get it to where you can live with it. And it doesn't look nearly as bad when you in thread as it does on the screen. See that little artifact there that goes across? Actually, I might have better luck if I go from this side. And this line that I just moved, this line right here that I'm playing with, this is your inclination line. This tells your stitches what direction to go in. Oh, I'm so close. Magic. There we go. See, it's just a matter of playing with it. I didn't have any rhyme or reason. I just started tweaking things here and there and just kind of playing with it. So now that I've got my elephant body, let's hide our stitches. Next thing I want to do is the elephant ear. And for that, I'm going to use a satin column. And I'm going to keep it black. But I want to come over here. And what we want to talk about with that is with the satin column. you have the ability to make it taper at the ends. Let's do, let's get the small one. Let's hide our stitches. Fill that with satin column. Contour. Oh, it's not showing my stitches. There we go. And see how it's at a point at the end of each one of those? So it really, it looks just like the artwork. And that's what we're going for. So let's nice. hide it one more time. One question that I have, Debbie. Yeah. There are stitches underneath the black part of the ear where you are? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Let me show you something here because I have Density Repair Kit installed. Let's give it a black eye as well and show our stitches. I have Density Repair Kit installed as well, which I would recommend everybody have because it allows you to see a density map. And you see with that density map, there is nothing there except for this little bitty part right here that's very red. And if I wanted to fix that, I could just make it a little bit bigger and that would take care of it. But anything red, red is bad, blue, green, yellow, you can do okay with. So there's nothing here in this design, even though I have it layered, that's going to cause a problem. And the beautiful part about that is it's going to give my elephant texture and depth. It's going to give you those things that you do embroidery for. You don't want just flat, lifeless embroidery. You want it to have texture and depth. You want it to be able to pop off your fabric. So that's why I don't add holes and do a bunch of those things, especially when I'm just starting out. 
because I want to see my embroidery come to life. Very cool. Hey, Carolyn asks on the gray elephant if you can change the direction of the stitches. Can you show us that one more time? Oh, certainly. Let's get out of the... Here, and then I have one more question after that. Okay, right here, this yellow guy right here, this is my stitch direction, my inclination line. That's how I change the direction of my stitches. Very cool. And you can change the fill type too. I certainly can. If I wanted my elephant to have like a scale pattern. Now it looks like a little wrinkled baby. Oh, that one's cute. Oh my goodness. Love it. Here's a, um, oh, so cute. I could play with that all day. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cheryl Squirrel asks, does density repair run on its own? No, it does not. It does need a platform to run in. And Jerry is asking, do you have to purchase this program in modules? You can. You can purchase Stitch Artist Level 1. You can purchase it level two, and then it's gonna level two is gonna have everything that level one has, plus all the level two stuff. You purchase level three, level three is gonna have everything level one, level two, and then all the extra stuff in level three. Cool. Hey, uh, Jerry made a comment earlier. She says. I've been using another digitizing program. This one is much more user-friendly. Well, thank you. I tend to think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's work on our big elephant real quick. We'll click on that one. Oh no, we didn't do our little nose wrinkles on our little elephant. Let's hide our stitches. And I'm going to do all three of these at once if it'll let me. Oh, shnikes. There we go. And I am going to fill them with the little satin column. And we're going to show our stitches. And there we have our darling baby elephant. Oh, my goodness, Debbie. How cute is that? Jeanette says, love baby elephants. Can't wait to see the baby elephant twins in Syracuse at Rosemont Gifford Zoo. Hopefully next year. <laughs> oh, how fun. Yeah. Our zoo had a baby elephant when my daughter was little. And every year, his birthday was close to her birthday. So every year for her birthday, we had to go see the baby elephant, which after a couple of years, wasn't a baby elephant anymore. But she still thought it was a baby elephant. <laughs> <laughs> they grow very fast. Okay, so let's fill this with some fill. And let's come over here, click on the color tab, click on our SVG, our, our color chip. Now, what I showed last week, let's talk about that again this week. And let's click on the palette in the view box. And that way we can select the same gray that we have our baby elephant done in. Okay, because it's going to show us the view, it's going to show us the palette, and I've got current page selected up here, so I've got the palette for the current page. So I don't have to worry about searching for gray and going through the list and taking a chance on not getting the right one.
So it's just a little tip and trick. So let's click OK. And then again, we would, let's look at our baby elephant. We would do the same thing with our big elephant. We would change our start and stop points. And let's change the direction of our stitching using our inclination line. Let's view our stitches. Oh, pretty good for a first time. I cheated though. I kind of used the same way we did before. Now let's click this guy. Let's come over here to our patterns. And let's check scales too and see what that gives us. Oh, that's a nice look for a mom and a baby elephant. Okay, let's hide our stitches one more time. I'm going to click on the ear. I'm going to fill it with satin column. I'm going to show my stitches. Let's see, I can contour those. I have contour one and two. I also have square ends. So there we go, there's our ear. And then let's hide our stitches and get our little ear wrinkle. And let's do our eye while we're here. And let's do these guys while we're here. Satin column. Look at our stitches. There we go. They're both our two baby elephants, our two mama and baby elephant. Oh my gosh. Imagine how much if you wanted to um, create your own designs, you can sell them or put them on anything, make gifts for people. This would be so cute in a nursery. It would be. It would be adorable. Make the, you know, the mama pink and the little baby pink or blue, whatever it is. <laughs> um, Carolyn asks, can you show that magic wand again? I don't understand how it's working. Okay, let's go back to this piece of artwork. And I still have my, I haven't right clicked, so I still have my magic wand selected. Let's right click and be done with the bowl. Let's click on our magic wand, which is this guy right here, this tool. Go to our rolling pin, click in the middle, and see how it automatically, or I should say automatically, gave us an outline. Voila. I can do the same thing at the ends. There we go. I could do the same thing with the whisk. And we could do I whisk you a Merry Christmas. Yeah, that's going to be my, my gift. <laughs> I whisk you a Merry Christmas. Oh my gosh, Samantha says, I want to learn how to digitize. Well, this is our fourth video that we've done with Debbie. So definitely um, catch up on the other two. And, and Brilliance has tons of videos on YouTube, right? They yep. do. They do, certainly. Yeah. Here's one question from Marissa. 
Hey, Marissa, she asks, what does level three have? Because she currently owns level one and level two. Okay, well, we're going to talk about level three here in just a minute. So we'll, you'll see what level. Awesome. There we go. Oh. I had to look for holes on there. That's much cleaner now. See, Jerry. you don't always want to look for holes. Yeah, Jerry says, I love the magic wand. I have to trace every line. Oh, my goodness. The key is looking for good artwork. And it, it can be found. It's out there. You can find good artwork. You just got to look for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So any questions about level two? Um, I think we went through all the questions so far. Um, so if you wanted to move on to level three, I think we're good. And guys, don't forget, I'm checking the subscribers on YouTube. We haven't gotten enough to get to 9,000 yet. So please, if you haven't yet, Go to our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. And if you do, we're going to give two giveaways at the end of this video. Um, so far, we're at one giveaway. So um, just go ahead and comment. Hashtag all brands in the comment section to be eligible for our giveaway. And definitely hop on over to YouTube. Click that bell to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Now, isn't that giveaway a $50 gift certificate? Yes, to all brands. Plus, quite a giveaway just for getting how many people do we need to have sign up? I'm three away. Three subscribers just just away. Three subscribers, folks. <laughs> Shoot, I should do that. <laughs> okay, level three, and we're going to do a ladybug. And with level three, we're going to talk about these guys right here. There's some things added up here. There's. Um, add a embossing line there is a magic a line magic wand that magic wand i'll tell you can be a little finicky you have you have to have good clean line artwork or line image for that to work so that's why i looked for good clean vector art so we're going to do a ladybug and we're going to talk about these guys here, specifically this one here, the subtract, because remember what Barbara asked me earlier about sewing all those pieces on top of the elephant? That was fine, but sometimes you don't want that look. Sometimes I might want my wings and my body of my ladybug to be one level so my spots really pop and my eyes really pop. So for that, I'm going to use sub subtract as my pathing tool. Now this one here is, and it creates an area. Um, say I have two areas overlap. So I'll have, if I use that pathing tool, I'll have a, an area of my first, well, let's just show you real quick. Let's get a new page. Hey, Debbie, we got to 9,000 subscribers. All right. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. <laughs> Yay! So we'll be doing two giveaways at the end of this video. Thank you, everyone. Way to go, folks. Okay, and see now I got these two circles that overlap each other. If I select them both, select all, come over here and do my and. I have an area where I have my first circle, my second circle, and the area where they both overlapped. That's good if you want to add shading in, in an area. 
if you have the, the proper overlap and want to add just a little shading. Think of the MasterCard logo. How that middle section is shaded. Okay, so what we're going to do with this, I'm going to look at all my sections. I know I've got all the spots on my wings. Here's my body. Here's my one heart. These two are my eyes. These are my one wing section. I've got double wing sections here. Here's my hearts on my antenna. And here's my other wing section. So let's start with this wing section down here since it kind of looks like a spot. I'm going to select that. I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to select the body. Then I'm going to come up here and I am going to click on the subtract button. And see what that did to my butterfly and my object, I'm sorry, my ladybug and my object tree? It automatically tied my wing to the body. So let's come over here and select the second one. Do that again. Hold down my control key. And come up here to the subtract. Now I'm going to fill this with black fill. So it's going to take a while because it's going to have to go in these little areas and in these little areas. So it takes just a little bit for it to fill. But that's the best way you can see how subtract works. So if there are any questions, now would be a great time. Oh my goodness, uh, here we go. Here's one from Elaine. Is it possible to name the objects in the object panel? They're already named what they are. Like right now it's the line, but you want to name them like wing and spot and things like that? Yes. Okay. You can change the name, but you've got to make sure that you still have line in there because when it goes down to the bottom and fills, it's going to change the name. See, now it's filled. Mm hmm Okay. It changes its name automatically to fill. Great. Um, I will search YouTube to see if we have any more questions, but so far in the comments, the live comments, we don't have any. Okay, now we're ready to fill the hearts. And we want a red, and because I'm using the Robus and Anton, I can search by color, name, Let's make them Cabernet. That sounds like a fun color for a butterfly, doesn't it? Or a ladybug. Oh, yeah, that looks cute. Thread palettes, Cabernet. Okay, let's find our other two wings. Oh. 
change the color to Cabernet. I love it. Okay, now let's make our spots on our ladybug. Oh no, this one's an eye. Get my color. Go to my threads, might be helpful. There we go. I have a question, Debbie. Yes. Can you select multiple things at one time? I can. Just by clicking shift and, or how, how do you do that? Let's see. Uh, I didn't want to get the eye caught up in there. Oh, so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> that was my question. So now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to select the first one or the last one because I'm working from the end. Hold down my shift key. Select all of them. Oh, so there, you fast. there you go. I love it. Jeanette says, I love this ladybug. Um, <laughs> Jeanette also said, Phil is our friend. I'll have what Phil's having. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Cheryl Squirrel says, it's nice that you can have more than one file folder open. Yes, definitely. Let's talk a little bit more. We've still got a little time left. Let's talk a little bit more about some of the pathing tools and things. Well, I did have one other question from YouTube. Um, from last video um, that we didn't get to show is the two lines of text and how to change. This. Okay. Let's talk text for a minute. Let's get a new design page. Let's go to multi-line text. Now I can hold down my shift key. Let's hold down my, I'm sorry, let's hold down my control key. And there, now I've got two different sizes of text. Oh, wow. From one text entry. That was easy. <laughs> it was. Just got to remember, you've got to hold on your control key and that's your shift key. Very good. I will send um, the person that asked that question in the last video, uh, this video, so that they can see that done. Thank you. Okay. And now there was something that I wanted to show you in the with the elephants. Let me get my drawing. Let me go to my level two. Let's get my drawing tool. Okay, let's make this a satin column or a satin line i'm sorry now i can come over here since i've got this the satin line i can adjust the thickness i can make it wider 
Then I come over here, I have these line nibs. So for these guys here, if I didn't want to do a satin fill and just wanted to use my draw with points tool to draw those in, maybe I wanted to make them a different color. Maybe I wanted to do something different with them for whatever reason. Then if I click on my line nibs button here, I can automatically taper those at both ends. And that's a level two thing that would work pretty cool with these elephants. Let's Let's see how that would work. Let's come over here and pick up our draw with points tool. Click on our, uh, our line nibs, adjust them so I have a point on both ends. And there we go. It's so easy. Oh my goodness. Um, here's a question from Jerry. So this is our fourth video that we've done with you. She says, um, this is the first lesson that I've seen. Can I go back and see the previous lessons? And if so, where? So I put, uh, there's two videos from last year. This is the first one allbrands.com slash category slash 4558. And then the same thing uh, with the category number 4559. And that will be the categories of the ones that we did last year. Um, so I hope that's helpful. And Debbie, we'd love to have you back on the show. <laughs> I would love to do it. I have so much fun doing these. But you know, <laughs> one more thing we need to do before we finish our design my favorite thing and one of the things that Embrilliant Software is known for, look at our colors. Let's color sort this puppy. Reduce by two color changes. Let's click and put it in a new view. Now we click on it, only two colors. So no more of that clicking first, clicking last, clicking earlier, clicking later to get your colors to match up. Just click the color sort button. One button does it all. That's awesome. Here's okay. a question. Here's a, um, here's a question from Carolyn. Thanks, Carolyn. And I'll bring us in the side here. Okay, so Carolyn asks, on the line two of the text, could each line be a different font and color when you did all brands? Look at all those tabs you have. I love that. So easy. I know you can make them a different color. I don't think at this point, I don't think we can make them a different. Let's. A different text look because they're, let's see. Because it's one text box. So to have a different text, you bring in a, a different. Right. You would have to have oh. a different text box for that. Got it. Because as soon as I click on the to select, my text box goes away. And when I click on my new text box, it gives me new text. But I can change the color. Go to my threads. And make them all a different color. Oh, just okay. by clicking on the letter. All different fun colors. Clicking on the color chip. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Okay. I love the questions. <laughs> All right. So Shirley has a very good question. I missed what program this is. Is it three different programs? It's all one program, basically. It's all Stitch Artists. But Stitch Artists is so, sold in three levels. So we went through Stitch Artists Level 1, Stitch Artists Level 2, and Stitch Artists Level 3. Very so cool. it just depends on how competent you feel you are, how... how much you want to do, how much you want to invest mm -hmm. as to which level you're going to go in. Now, me, since I found this butterfly, I've really been in love with the pathing tools. Before, I can tell you I didn't do much more than um, add a break to a closed shape and cut the object at the break line to make those letters that separate so I can put a name in the middle. Hmm. You know, but now that I found this ladybug and I know that I can use subtract, it's opened up my world. So I think about all of them a little differently now and different things I can do with them. Like real quick, let's show. Let's make this text go away. Let's go to a single line of text. Let's select This one will work. Okay, I'm gonna go back to level three. I am going to select this. I'm gonna create an outline from my stitches on my page. Now that's what selected my outline. Now I'm going to copy and paste that outline. And then I'm going to inflate it. And I'm going to remove any holes. And then I am going to flatten this. And I'm going to union. I'm sorry. I'm going to union this. And then I'm going to select. Let's undo. Undo is my best friend. Everybody has a best friend in the program. It's just which one is yours. That's the question. Now let's delete this one. Now I can take these three guys here. Well, let's just go these two guys here. That's nah, not dark enough.
And then this guy, I can make him an applique, adjust my sewing order, adjust my color, and I just made a monogram applique for a purse or a wallet. So easy. Oh my gosh. So we got some questions coming in um, and we need to start wrapping up and right. do our giveaway pretty soon. Um, so maybe we can do a speed round of, uh, of questions. Sure. Then. How does that sound? Okay. Sounds great. Jeanette asks, I always love to hear that people are learning to use their tools and edutain edutainment. I learned so much down here. Okay. It wasn't a question, but a nice little comment. Well, thank um, you. <laughs> here's another comment from Cheryl. Um, I never thought about digitizing, but you make it look so easy with this program. Okay. Elaine asks, if I were to digitize an in the hoop bag, how would I integrate a decorative stitch onto the bag? Can you make line designs in Stitch Artist? Certainly. Here's my draw with points tool. And come up here and motif run. Select my motif. There we go. Awesome. All I did was draw a line, right click at the end. Very cool. Now, if I wanted to fill my bag, I could use the motif fill and make a square and fill the square with lines of motif. Oh, very cool. So you could make your own quilting stitches on top and, and things like that. Exactly. <laughs> okay, here's a good question from Jeanette. If you go in at one level, is there any price break to upgrade? Yes. Yes, there is. <laughs> On our website, allbrands.com, there's an optional upgrade from one to two or two to three. And that's, right. it's cheaper if you go that route. Uh, let's see. Here's a good question from Shirley. Uh, so these are standalone programs, or do you need the Brilliance too? No, the stitch artist all or the each each level is a standalone level. You don't need in brilliance essentials or enthusiasts for any of the stitch artist programs. Because if you want to digitize, you may just be a digitizer and not a design editor. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are design collectors and design editors and never want to digitize. So that's why we kind of have a break in the line with digitizing tools and your editing tools. Now, if I have them both, they do both go under the same umbrella and I can access my editing tools just by clicking on my select objects. And now I've changed to my editing tools. So that it does, they do all merge together for convenience, mm -hmm. but you don't need one to use the other. Oh, hello. <laughs> what a cutie pie. <laughs> yeah. You're kidding. Okay. Um, okay. We got two more questions and then we'll do our giveaway. So if you haven't yet, please go ahead and comment hashtag all brands because I'm going to give away two gift certificates to allbrands.com today. Yay. Um, yay. And thank you everyone to subscribe. Um, here is one from Jerry. Uh, Jerry asks, who can I talk to about questions I have prior to purchasing the program? Well, give us a call, Jerry, at 866-255-2726. We'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. If we don't know the answer, then we'll find out and, uh, and get back to you on that. So uh, that's 866-255-2726. Or you can email me at events at allbrands.com, and I'll get the answers for you. Uh, let's see. Beth Small asks what format does this save to okay good question they've all been great questions but if i go to file and save as click on my drop down 
It will save in all these formats, PES, DST, DP3, DIP, SHV, PCS. There's a flavor for virtually everyone. Wonderful. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, well, I'm going to bring in my giveaway screen. And here it is. And we're going to pull a winner. All right. So drum roll, please, for our first winner is Christina LaBeouf. Congratulations, Christina. Oh, my gosh. I'm so happy for you. Please, <laughs> please email me at events at allbrands.com, your name, number, and address to claim your $50 allbrands.com e-gift card. All right. Are you ready for the next drawing? Here we go. All right. Bring it on. All right. Drum roll, please. And our winner is... Jeanette Yeager, congratulations. Congratulations. Please email me at events at allbrains.com uh, and we'll get you your prize. And thank you everyone who subscribed to our channel. That really keeps us going on and, and uh, lets us get more education out to you guys. And, and um, it's really, really great to be here to give you that education. So thank you so much, Debbie. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. <laughs> I love in brilliant software. It's so easy and great. And um, oh, look, Laura says she's learned so much. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. You guys all have a good evening. <laughs> yes, you too. We'll see you next Thursday, um, which is actually Thanksgiving. Can you believe it? Oh, wow. <laughs> so I'll have a uh, recording that we have, but it's a wonderful program through Bernina, and they're going to be doing a project on their overlocker sergers. So don't miss out on that. That will be very fun. And we'll oh, so I wonder if Pam Mashey's going to be doing it. Uh, no, it's not Pam Mashey. It's someone else. But well, I know also. she's like their overall serger goddess now. Yes. <laughs> well, the Sturgers themselves are goddesses, Debbie. Are they have really? I haven't them? seen one yet. I'll have to <gasps> I have to take a trip and come see one. There's like nothing that I've ever sewn on in my life. Wow. Um, I'm very spoiled now that I have one. <laughs> I wow. literally walk by other Sturgers and I hear the sound and I'm like, why is it so loud and clunky sounding? These things are smooth and they're so easy to operate. They, I just love them. Like, because on the screen, on the new Bernina L890, you can literally say, okay, I want to do this stitch. And you don't have to pull out a manual or anything crazy like that. And it walks you through on the screen. Like every, anything manual that you have to do, like oh wow, thread the needles a certain way, but it's air threading. It has a knee lifter. Yes. Oh my gosh. I'm lost with my serger if I lose my card that has all my stitch breakdowns on and how to thread it. If And and in my sewing room, those things get lost quite yes. frequently. So <laughs> I've lost a lot. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, these are smart, very smart machines and they keep, they're like, it's like you have a best friend in the machine that's like knows how to do all the stitches. Wow. <laughs> and it just like helps you along and shows you videos on how to do things. It's how amazing. Oh, amazing. And the air threading and the knee look. Uh, oh, we have an event coming up with Bernina on this searcher December 2nd or 3rd in our all brand Slidell location that we're really excited about. Um, Mary Cohen, a Bernina national educator is going to be there, um, showing techniques for sergers. So you don't have to own the Bernina L890, but we do have them open at the event for you to sit and try, um, and learn all there is to know about sergers. So all that wonderfulness we were just talking about, you're actually going to have there to show on December 2nd. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Awesome. We're so excited. Okay. Well, we'll see y'all next week. And I hope that you have a great Thanksgiving and holiday season. Yeah. You guys all have a safe and happy holiday. Thank you.
Bye. Bye.